This is the sixth in a series of lessons about string matching algorithms and how to implement them. In this lesson, you'll learn how to implement a complete KMP search. The program will be described in pseudocode first and then demonstrated in VB.NET, C Sharp, and Python. In the previous lessons, you learned how the KMP algorithm works and why it is so much better than the naive brute force approach. You also learned how to implement the pattern pre processing phase of the KMP algorithm. You're advised to familiarize yourself with the contents of the previous lessons before continuing. This lesson also assumes that you already have some programming experience. Here, you can see an input string and a pattern that will help us to visualize the execution of a KMP search program. We'll step through a pseudocode version of the program first, and we'll illustrate the search as it progresses. You'll see some real code a little later. It's a relatively simple program. There's only one loop with no nesting, so in the worst case scenario, that is, if the pattern we're looking for is at the very end of the input string, or if it isn't there at all, then doubling the size of the input string is only going to double the processing time. We have linear time complexity. The program begins by calling a function to do the pre-processing. Exactly how this function works was covered in the previous lessons. The function is passed the pattern as a parameter and returns a one-dimensional array containing a fail value for each possible partial match. In this program, the array has the name LPS. The program makes use of two pointer variables, i, which is used to scan the input string, and j, which is used to scan the pattern. Both are initialized to zero. The loop allows the program to visit each character of the input string one at a time. The value of i ranges from zero to the length of the input string. The characters at the pointers are compared and found to be the same. So both i and j are incremented. A check is made to see if j has reached the end of the pattern, which would mean that the pattern has been found. Not yet, so the loop runs again. The characters at the new positions of i and j are compared and found to be the same. So i and j are incremented again. A check is made to see if the whole pattern has been found, but still not yet, so around the loop we go again and the next pair of characters at i and j are compared. But this time, they are different. The program now needs to reset the pattern pointer. It checks to see if the value of j is already zero. If it was zero, then the pattern pointer wouldn't be able to move any further back, so it would simply stay where it is. However, in this case, j is not zero. The LPS array is consulted for its new position. The first two characters of the pattern were successfully matched, that is, everything up to and including j-1. So the fail value for j-1 is retrieved. In this case, the fail value is 0. So j is reset to index position 0 of the pattern. A check is made for success, but of course not yet, so the program keeps looking. A sequence of pattern characters are found one after another, so i and j advance together. But again, this turns out to be only a partial match for the pattern. j is not zero, so the LPS array is consulted again. This time, j minus one is five, which has a fail value of three. J is reset accordingly. There's no need to check the first three characters of the pattern again. And the search continues. Whenever it fails to match the whole pattern, the LPS array is consulted. That is, if the pattern pointer isn't already zero. If a pair of characters are found to be different and J is already zero, there's no need to look up a fail value. J can stay put. And only i needs to be incremented. Eventually, 
If the pattern is there to be found, the value of j will become equal to its length, in this case 7. The starting position of the pattern within the input string can then be reported. This will be the resting position of i minus the length of the pattern, which is now in j. We may want the program to continue searching for more occurrences of the same pattern. And, depending on the content of the pattern, there might be overlapping occurrences within the input string. To continue searching, j can be reset according to the value in the LPS array for the whole pattern. Ultimately, the program will end when i reaches the end of the input string. Let's take a look at some real code. So here's the program written in vb.net. I've declared a string variable called pattern, which is holding my pattern. In this case, we're searching for the word bonbons. And I've declared another string variable to hold the input string. The pattern is in there somewhere. These are my pointer variables. And here, I've declared an array variable which will store integers. This array is populated when I call the build LPS array function, passing it the pattern. The loop is practically identical to the pseudocode that you've just seen. Let's check it works. Bonbons is in here at position 14. Here's an alternative input string. This has got multiple occurrences of the word bonbons. At position 11, 24 and 32. Here's the same program in C Sharp. It's functionally identical. The only real difference is the syntax. I'm using messagebox.show and I need to convert i minus j into a string before I can output it. Otherwise, this is practically the same, apart from a few semicolons and curly brackets. And here it is in Python. This is my KMP search program. It takes two parameters, the pattern and the input string. I've defined these down here. And this is my call to the program, passing it the pattern and the input string. This is the call to the build LPS array function which I've already defined here. This was covered in previous lessons. And that's working fine too.